Hello and welcome to the Transcendence Podcast and the Quantum Life Podcast. This is your host, Jessica Alstrom. And I'm just going to give you guys about 10 or 15 minutes of, of you know, deep reaching thoughts for you to just sit with and um, contemplate over, you know, um, over patterns of what you've all been going through lately. If you've been following my work in Quantum Life and in JessicaAlstrom.com, you can see how much teaching I have actually been doing. Uh, you know, I teach a couple of times a week live, and it's all channeled through the current of the collective awakening process. So, you know, as you all know that this last eclipse that we had, it was the final wake-up call and the wake-up call of humanity, which means that the final switch has been flipped and the rest of humanity will begin to awaken in the time and space of the path of least resistance for each and every soul being um, here on earth. Now, what does that mean for us light workers? That means that it's our final curtain call and we are no longer in dress rehearsal and we are all being called forth to basically take action and, and uh, become the people who we've always known we were deep down. There's like a call of duty that has been assigned to each and every one of us over the last couple of months, basically since the beginning of the year, which represents the solar plexus and taking our power back and our power of love, not power of power, and becoming the epic version of the light worker that we have always, always known that we were. So today I wanted to briefly talk about entanglement, relationships, twin flames, soul soulmates. Um, it's a hot topic with people who are waking up and people who are very seasoned in the spiritual community. And I am going to give you, again, my perspective. My perspective is going to be a quantum perspective, which means it's all-inclusive. There's no segregation or definite descriptions between what I believe as far as um, thoughts, patterns, and belief systems that have anything to do with spiritual modalities, religions, or... Um, um, any archetypes, which means that quantum is all inclusive. So when I teach, I try to give you guys a fourth grade um, perspective of quantum reality. And what is quantum reality? Quantum reality is focused imagination that um, that we're all playing here in our holographic universe and our virtual reality and how we create our reality and how we navigate through all of this uh fun reality that we create by intention and default of old programming and belief systems and patterning and collective. So I wanted to talk a little bit about entanglement because as I just s spoke about this awakening, this mass global awakening that's happening, is you may be in a situation where you are a light worker and you are, you know, surrounded by a collective of family members, relationships, uh, you know, friends, family, children, uh, groups, religion, schools, and you might have a lot of deep connections with uh, those people, or at least you did, and you're noticing that over the last few weeks that things feel different. And, um, and so in order for you to kind of understand what you're going through, you need to understand gently a little bit about the idea of entanglement. As we know that we are energy, and we are focusing our energy into a perspective that allows us to generate a reality that we see, feel, and can navigate and experience in. But we are at the baseline of that. We are still just energy. And energy can mix with other energy and signals can get crossed. And when signals get crossed, the information about the two signals crossing gives you a new story. Okay, so if I had a positive and a negative charge or electrical current and they came together, what they would create would be cre they would create neutrality because it would balance each other out. But if you have a friend who is negative and you're positive, you're finding that in order for you to have that socialization, that you're finding that as an empath, because you're able to also connect with their frequency and understand and read their frequency, and at from a young age you were taught that love is about in it, it's a, it's about um, taking on people's things in order to heal and helping them at the cost of losing yourself. I mean, these are all like what we've been taught. 
So to understand entanglement, you have to realize is that if a positive and a negative came together in their natural, their natural essence, it would neutralize. But if a positive moves over to a negative and then says, I want to have a emotional or physical or a communication perspective and, and um, a relationship with this, then I must adapt my frequency to the frequency that I am around. And so what you're technically doing is instead of holding your frequency, you're becoming the frequency of the people who you are around. That's why some people, you know, you can be in a great mood and you can, you know, be high as a kite and all of a sudden you walk in a room and you hear someone talking about politics and you don't necessarily agree with everything they're saying, but there's a little bit of contradiction in your energy field now and all of a sudden you walk out and you're worried about if you paid your insurance and you're worried about the laundry and and you're finding yourself in that thought form um uh synchronistic you know flow of behavior now of someone who is not necessarily in agreement with politics but isn't that fire unlimited power potential version of yourself that you were 15 minutes before the conversation started so entanglement is extremely subtle energy interference it's very subtle which means that you can be madly in love with someone see love has nothing to do with frequency and vibration you can be madly in love with someone and feel utterly horrible about yourself when you're around them okay because You have been taught early on that love is about giving part of yourself away and also adapting someone else's um, essence in order to really connect. And that's why all the new age, you know, teachings that I've been doing over the last year are about giving up attachments and and focusing more on connection than attachment. And there's a fine line between those two things. Um, And we'll get into that a little bit. But really, it's about understanding that your coherence your frequency it becomes a form which it communicates with which means the power of influence um you know i have this this great friend who you know was madly in love with this this man and you know um had a long-term relationship with him and you know as the as collective began to change and she began to wake up wake up more and more and more she realized that you know she had given she loved this person so much she had given a big piece of her freedom away to incorporate um, his needs and wants and also to help him with his life and that wasn't serving her and as she began to move out of that relationship she realized how difficult it was to move out because once you have an entanglement process there is literally like pieces of you embedded into pieces of them energetically and it's hard to understand where you stop and they start especially when you're around that you know i do a ton of marriage counseling and um one of the first things that i teach is that we've got to untangle the energy fields because again when there's entanglement there's really just one large consciousness acting as a couple versus two individual higher selves. So we have to break up the entanglement energy. And I always promote time and space. Time and space is one of those things where, you know, when you haven't been around your family members in a long time, your head is clear, your thought process is clear, it's unique, it's your own. And then all of a sudden you get back into that family unit that, you know, you haven't been around in a long time and you you just don't feel so good. So it's, again, that entanglement process. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. Um, Just going to do these quick, tiny little podcasts. I'm actually getting ready to do a large webinar around entanglement that's a video so that you can actually see some visual aids because when we're dealing with energy, you know, it is one of those unseen phenomenons that you have to kind of wrap your third dimensional brain around to kind of understand. But hopefully I gave you some enough pointers um, in this quick little podcast to, to make sense of what's happening. And the reason why I'm planting that seed today is because as you know, the dress rehearsal ends for light workers, and we move into our workforce, which is the um, you know uh, the work field of the light worker, and the rest of the world begins to wake up. You're going to notice a lot of times that the roads are feeling very separate. 3D and 5D are feeling very um, 
you know, hard to access. And you may be highly entangled with some people who are deciding that they need more 3D experience in order to fully awaken. And you're going to need to know how to untangle that energy and, and really, and from a place of self-love, self-respect, self-focus, um, and self-care, how to do that without, you know, necessarily breaking someone's heart or leaving them high and dry or abandoning anyone because that's what we're all afraid of and that's what keeps the entanglement locked in is you know I love them so how could I hurt them by taking my energy away from them and that's what this podcast is going to be about so I'm going to be doing um, I'm sorry this webinar that I'm getting ready to do that's going to be probably about an hour and a half it will be featured in my quantum life community um, and quantum life tribes and quantum life uh, uh, Tika, which is my Transcendence International Consciousness Academy um, year-long uh, kind of uh, spiritual development. And I also have a short version of that on Facebook that's just a private subscription group. I will be featuring my upcoming webinars on that site um, it, on the Jessica Alstrom Quantum uh, Life Tika, T-I-C-A. And you can find that on Facebook. If you're not on Facebook, you can go to my website, which is jessicaallstrom.com. And there's a little drop down at the top that says Tika, T-I-C-A, and that stands for Transcendence International Consciousness Academy. And I have uh, downloadables. I have podcasts. I have, um, you know, certifications. I have classes. Anything that you could possibly be needing the bridge and the gap of moving out of 3D into 5D, I have put together for you guys. I also have about 200 hours, probably 200 plus videos on YouTube um, for just all of your learning curves and um, information. But my my intention for the beginning of this year was to move out of personal coaching and move into global coaching. And so I have set up these forums on YouTube and Facebook where I can just, you know, go live and channel a two hour message about everything from collective eclipse energy to crystalline grids to soulmates to twin flames to um, anything you could imagine that the collective is going through is what I'm called to channel. So I don't have like outlines and, oh, this week I'm going to teach this. I literally sit down in the chair. I tap into the collective of both light workers and humanity and I channel the message for that particular time space. So to kind of wrap this up, how does entanglement affect twin flame relationship how does it affect a soulmate relationship how does it affect the relationship that you have with yourself and how does it affect your relationship of who you're becoming and the truth of it is is if you are entangled with anything outside of your own focused consciousness you will feel kind of like you're walking in cement so identifying where those entanglements lie i mean you could be entangled with a project you know a book idea um you know, a craft project, an art project, because again, as soon as, as soon as something is literally influenced around you, that you give your conscious awareness and focus to, it becomes part of you. And depending on the emotional resonant pattern that you have for that item, if there is any sort of despair or desire or shame or guilt or fear Anything like that, it locks you into the energy field of the item, thing, person, place, circumstance. So notice how I'm going to leave you guys with the understanding that, that entanglement is caused by negative frequencies, not positive frequencies. See, po positive experiences, waves, frequencies, they are literally on the same wavelength, so they travel together and expand, which means that they become a double version of themselves instead of an old tangled mess, okay? So you get your energy tangled when you are influenced by something that pulls you into density, okay? So imagine like you have your favorite necklace and it's laying in your drawer and it gets all tangled up. You can't wear it because you can't even identify the, the natural flow of the chain, which is your energy, energy flow. So in order for you to wear it and, and, you know, have that art around your neck, you've got to untangle it. 
And so what we're going to be doing the rest of this year is working through in cleaning up entangled relationships with people, places, circumstances, and events. And that's why a lot of my teachings have been about surrender and letting go and redefining what love is, redefining what obligation is, redefining what loyalty is, um, working on self-love, self-respect, working on our boundaries, working on understanding soul contracts, themes, agreements made before incarnations. And so when you understand all these things, it makes it easier for you to untangle yourself because believe it or not, the entanglement process happens because you continue to say yes to it over and over again. And a lot of it is out of default because you're afraid to let go or hurt someone. So look for that upcoming webinar. Um, first and foremost, look for, for me on uh, jessicaalstrom.com if you are not on Facebook. If you are on Facebook, I have lots of different forums, teachings. I have free communities. I have paid communities. I have fast tracks. I have shortcuts. Um, I'm all about the cheat codes and fast forwarding our work as light workers and teachers and messengers and healers so that we can begin to live the heaven on earth that we disseminate to everyone else and, and um, help everyone else create, you know. So it's not about it's not about saving the world if you're not saved. So um, our job is first and foremost to have that clear, um, focused, clean, present moment frequency of higher self so that we may navigate and utilize intention and intuition properly so i'll leave you with that uh feel free to join me on my other forums and um, say hello and let me know how you found me otherwise um i will be making these little short min podcasts uh to plant the seeds to um get you guys uh to think a little bit differently even if it's just a 15 minute podcast look for my upcoming webinar about soulmates uh, twin flames and entanglements and how to be fully um, in aligned with your own energy field. All right. I look forward to seeing you all soon and have a blessed day and I will see you soon.